with a beautiful total moon eclipse. And this one, it's going to be on March 13 to the 14th. Now, it's going to be <laughs> in early hours of the morning, pretty much after midnight. And this event is going to last around six hours. So it's important to get your timers and maybe with your smart telescopes, we can do this too. Be sure to level the tripod. This is a very important step. The actual scheduling mode uh, right now, it has a minimum of 10 seconds, so it's not going to work for uh, this type of event. Now let the telescope find the moon and center it. This can take a few minutes, it may take a few seconds, this is normal, just give it some time and tap on center target right there in the right corner to center the moon. The best way is to have the square uh, kind of like on top of the craters, an area that you can see well, and then just uh, have it tap there and click out of focus. A lot of people don't know that it has a manual focusing too. You have to click on those three dots on the top right. Then it takes you to the manual focus panel. It takes you to the next panel on those uh, left arrows. Those are the numerical arrows to change uh, the focus manually. If you need to uh, recenter the moon for any reason, clouds of obstruction or something, you have to uh, disable that center button in order to use the uh, joystick and move the moon. This is a very important step that if you don't know it in the middle of the night, it's difficult to figure out. And to move it, you can just use your fingers, tap on the screen and you can uh, position the moon better or you need to use the uh, uh, arrows, kind of like a joystick uh, feature. And now the most important part is the exposure time. How do we figure that out? Well, it's going to be different for everybody, but there are some good starting points. And uh, the three different phases of the eclipse, you have to pay attention and make adjustments on the uh, exposure time and gain. Let's take a look. At the beginning of the event, the moon is going to be bright and the uh, telescope does a very good job out of focusing on it. But as you go uh, into the different phases, um, you need to start uh, looking into the uh, lightness adjustments. And there you start uh, playing a little bit and try to find the best <laughs> way it's looking at that moment. Start with the gain at zero until uh, the uh, totality of the eclipse where you may have to increase a little bit the gain. But up to that phase, it should be zero. For the exposure time, well, this one, like I said, it can be different for everybody, but a good starting point, it's going to be somewhere around the uh, um, 1 over 200 to 300 uh, milliseconds, somewhere in there. That's a good place to start. A crucial... Step to know is that you can change the exposure time as it goes on the spot using the video mode. But if you are using the single uh, photo mode, you cannot change it 
during that photo. So if you want to change the exposure time on the single frame, you have to wait to that uh, photo ends and then you will have to change it. I have captured several total eclipses as solar and uh, for the moon. And I always like to start with some single photos. That way I can like have a feel of the gain and the um, uh, exposure time. Uh, and because this is a very long event, I highly recommend you can start with some single photos and then that is going to be your starting point for the other, other modes uh, such as the uh, videos or uh, time lapse. The video mode is going to take 30 frames per second. So for example, on a 10 second video, you are going to get 300 frames. And let's remember that this is a very long event, about six hours. And this is what I did um, last year using the Dwarf Telescope for the uh, total eclipse, which it was uh, the total solar eclipse, which it was a very long event. And I just kind of like did many videos and that way I was able to capture all of the faces without any problems. I think it's probably the safest way to capture everything without missing or having uh, settings all confused. So if you want to be safe uh, for the uh, moon eclipse, the same way I'm going to do, I'll probably use uh, the video mode uh, most of the uh, time. And this way I am sure that I capture everything because I can take uh, the single frames after it and edit, but be sure that you have plenty of room on that memory of the Sistar Telescope. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It's easy to do, it's free. Like and subscribe.